lot of different folks to so right now, this event, and I'm just really thrilled that we're doing this in Massachusetts. We are actually I've had some having a conversation with Western Mass resident astronaut Katie Coleman here. from fact, space. She's orbiting the Earth in the International Space Station over 17,000 miles an hour, which I think is pretty fast. That is very, very fast. Totally. And actually, um, she's also a uh, UMass alumna as well. Uh-huh. Yes. Very cool. And so we're going to listen in right now. You know, we certainly have made mistakes, all of us up here. You know, we certainly have made mistakes, all of us up here. Individually and as a team, we've made mistakes. And that's really why we practice. You know, one thing is to learn about the mistake itself, and then the other thing is to understand, you know, how we as people react to that and how we react as a team. And what I really like about the people that I work with, you know, both up here in space and down on the ground, is that, you know, we're all upset when we make a mistake. We don't like it. We wish we didn't. And we, but what we're doing, our job up here, is more important than yelling at somebody for making a mistake or being mad at them about it or being mad at yourself. You just, our job is so important and important to do correctly and safely that we just have to put that behind us and get on with the work. And, and I really like that about the people I work with. Hi, my name is Brangelica Canale. I'm from Kelly School. Will a dog or other animal ever come to live in the space station? Well, I don't know about, uh, I, I, they, they could come here, but I will tell you it's taken me a little while to get used to living up here. In fact, um, it's funny, we, we do a lot of walking around, you know, with our hands. In fact, I was just doing a training exercise where I had to carry around our pressure reading gauge, and it's a big thing about this big. And uh, my partner up here in space uh, pointed out that uh, it would actually be easier for me to carry this thing around in the modules if I actually just kind of like, you know, hooked it between my knees here and then I could just carry it around and I would have my hands free to make sure I could find a path and, and not get off balance as we tried to go quickly through the modules. So it's been hard for us to learn how to move around up here. And, uh, but I imagine that dogs and cats and all the other creatures would, would adapt as well. We actually bring some of them up here to do experiments. We've had mice up here. Um, we've had uh, all sorts of insects up here and, uh, and fish and worms. In fact, we have worms up here right now doing experiments. And the reason is that all of these creatures have some things in common with us as people. And we can learn about what affects these uh, the, the worms or whatever insects or animals we're talking about, what affects them up in space. And it helps us understand what affects people up in space so that we can then go on to really, under to really know what's going to happen when we are further away from home and spend a long time away from home in space on our way to Mars. Hi, my name is Emmanuel Ortiz from Stemmel Academy. My question is, how do you keep in touch with your family and how does your family deal with you being in space and away, and away for so long? Well, Emmanuel, um, I get to call home, so to speak. Um, I, I call home, I would say, almost every day. I've been up here just about uh, 102 days now, and I think I've only missed three days in, in terms of calling home because we have an internet protocol phone that we can use when we have the right satellite coverage. So somehow I find some time to, to call. I think the bad thing is that they can't call me, and that makes it a little bit you know, hard for them to always be the ones who get called, and if the satellite coverage ends, then you know I can't really call back right away. And, and they've gotten a little bit used to that. But I think, uh, well, you know, when you're a family and when you have a close relationship, you just learn how to uh, be happy about the communication that you do have. And so we, uh, we try to talk about our days and how our days are going. Um, I read to my son and read stories just like I would at home. And we just try to make the most of the communication that we have. We also have video conferences once a week. And those are great. Hi, my name is Laura Ernst from McMahon School. How does the IS has help prepare astronauts for a future voyage to Mars? Learn in lots of different ways. We're learning um, uh, about, you know, there's sort of the equipment side of things, about how to run a spaceship and how to make sure that a spaceship runs. I'll give you an example. We, we can't bring all the water that we need up here, and so we recycle our water. And I know that sounds kind of yucky, and, and actually I guess it is kind of yucky, but I'll tell you that when I go to the, the water dispenser and get water, it tastes beautiful and clean. But we are actually recycling 
all of our sweat, all of our urine, all of our, you know, old water. And, and that seems to work out pretty well. But I'll tell you that the recycling system has been, um, has been running differently than we expected when we designed it. And so we're learning lessons about how to make a water recycling system. So there's that equipment side of things. And then we're learning about, you know, how people react to being up in space. We actually lose bone mass up here because we don't walk around on our legs and we don't send those signals to our brain that says she needs these muscles and bones. So we don't walk around on those legs. And so we need, we, we actually lose bone mass um, at a rate about 10 times of like an older person that has osteoporosis. So we're learning about how exercise and medicines can help us prevent that. That's a good question. Hi, I'm Carlos Modino from Kelly School. What are the positive points and the downsides to being on the ISS? Well, you know, for the, the downsides, you know, I'm not really sure I can think of one. I mean, I know I'm away from home for a long time from my family, and there's some things that I miss. There's food that I miss. There's people that I miss. But I'm in an amazing and wonderful and magical place where, you know, life is really different, and I'm learning more about it every single day about what I can do living in a, in a weightless environment. I mean, first of all, it's really fun. So I, I just don't think that there's a lot of disadvantages, and, in, and those disadvantages that I mentioned um, are the same as a lot of our, like, military people that are away from home home and serving their country. I mean, they're spending time away from their families and they're not in nearly as nice or exciting a place as this. And they don't get the view that I have to be able to look down at the earth and see amazing, amazing things on the earth. So um, there are advantages and disadvantages, but I'm really, really happy up here. And I don't really actually want to come home very soon. Hi, I'm Janelle Bryan from STEM Middle Academy. My question is, what happens if you have an unexpected medical emergency on board? It depends on the emergency. We're all medically trained, I mean, not to be doctors, but to do a lot of different procedures, and, um, and especially we have an automatic uh, defibrillator up here if somebody has some kind of a heart problem. So we're well trained in all the basic procedures, and you know the ground is just one phone call and one video call away, and we have doctors that are there all the time. And so we can always call and get their help, and if it's something where they need to show us something or tell us how to do something, then we have ways and we've practiced ways of doing that. And if it's really an emergency, we could actually be home in probably about 15 hours because we just climb in our Soyuz and our spacecraft and deorbit and land on the Earth. Hi, my name is Ana Diaz and I'm from McMahon School. My question is, do you remember the exact time you realized you wanted to be an astronaut and what did your family and friends say when you shared your dreams with them? Anna, you might find this surprising, but when I was growing up a long time ago, it was actually strange for girls to become astronauts. Now, I think, it, you, you know, you probably could think of a couple of women astronauts. And so I think it's really great. But when I was growing up, it was something I didn't even think of until I met Dr. Sally Ride. And she didn't remember meeting me. We've talked about it since. But all of a sudden, I looked at her, I shook her hand, and I thought, well, she's a real person just like me. And maybe that means I could do that job. And that's actually why I'm here talking to you today. Not so much so that all of you become astronauts, but so that you realize that people who do the jobs that you think are so cool and amazing, those people could be you. My name is Renielle. Um, I come from Kelly School. Here's my question. After the recent earthquake in Japan, have you noticed any changes to the Earth? We have uh, noticed, we've been taking pictures of Japan specifically, and just looking down with your eyes, I don't see much difference, although some, uh, I think you can see changes in the water around um, Japan with more sedimentation. But we've been using very big lenses to take detailed pictures of Japan to help people on Earth understand um, the extent of the damage and places where people might need help. So we, every time we go over Japan, we try to take pictures, and so we do notice some things. That was a really, that was a really cool 
internet. It's amazing what they can do with technology and a great educational opportunity for all those kids. Yeah, too. it really is amazing. Very I loved cool. her hair floating around. I know, it's great. Actually, <laughs> the, the really scary thing for me was the water recycling. I know. They recycle all of the water that they use. That's and exactly. that includes, like, we mean recycle, like use the, reuse the sweat and other bodily water. You have to real have a big passion for Man. space, that's for sure. Yeah.